Hello ladies and gents, Mantok Productions here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been such a long time since I've done a video previously. A um, couple of reasons for that. I had a big house move and then I had... Uh, I'm on a new internet connection which is actually running off 4G. So uh, yeah, um, internet smoothness is, uh, is not exactly what it was, once was. But uh, anyway... Uh, besides that, um, there have been a few updates um, in the flight sim world. Uh, you can see here I'm uh, I'm flying the Piper Arrow uh, 0 0.5.0. Um, I had a few issues with Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I've now um, uh, worked through. Uh, and also, uh, you might be seeing um, the fact that I'm actually using a flight recorder for these clips that you're watching now. So. Um, I'm hoping that that uh, will bring some some extra quality to my clips, my video clips, and my my YouTube videos uh, from now on for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, which is already, as you can see, an absolutely stunning, stunning platform. Um, there are a couple of other things that I have in the works. Um, I have uh, DCS flying happening now. That's uh, something that I'm trying to become more competent in before I start to make any videos on that um, and also Isle 2 Great Battles is uh, is another platform that I'm doing some flying in so uh, split between Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS and Isle 2 um, I'm hoping to bring some more varied content to you folks uh, some point in the future so, uh, sometime soon uh, the, the DCS uh, MI24 Hind I believe it is, is uh, coming soon into early access end of this month. Uh, that's something that I really want to be covering very uh, very comprehensively in depth. Um, I'm currently doing a lot of flying in the Mi-8, which is a transport, a Russian transport helicopter, which is has some similarities to the Hind. So um, you can see some clips of it playing here. Um, and you can see that DCS has now gone into um, version 2.7 which has brought um, some incredibly beautiful atmospheric uh, weather, uh, cloud systems and lighting and so forth um, that really bring it into, into uh, well it was already looking good but it's now looking even better it's, it's, it's comparable to Microsoft Flight Simulator in terms of gorgeous visuals as you'll see uh, later uh, also um, the Spitfire Mark 14 is now live in uh, Isle 2 Great Battles um, and I'll try and get some, some footage of me flying it up here uh, for you to see. Um, that's something that I'm going to be wanting to do extensive flying in and, uh, and feeling competent uh, flying that um, so that I can bring some videos to you guys of some, some combat dynamics and um, TAC view uh, or tr uh, TAC view? Uh, I think it's called TAC view, yeah. Uh, some TAC view uh, um, debriefs and that sort of thing uh, in dogfighting uh, online. So um, so yeah, there's a couple of things there I just wanted to mention before we got into our main video feature, which is of course uh, coming right up. So thank you for bearing with me and I will see you in a second. Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel, Mantok Productions here. Uh, this evening we're flying the Piper uh, Arrow 3 by Just Flight for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the recently released uh, version 0 0.5.0. Uh, there are a few small iterative uh, updates, uh, fixing a couple of small bugs and so forth. Um, at this point they are pretty much uh, finished with any major issues uh, since the launch of this uh, this this aircraft and uh, so today I'm actually flying from uh, uh, Karanarfen or Karanarfen I'm probably gonna butcher that pronunciation but I know what I know where the place is this is this is Wales this is North Wales very near Anglesey um, on the coast out uh, kind of northwest of Snowdon um, I've got it set to real world uh, time and real world weather at the moment and of course you can see the scene before us is absolutely stunning oh, I just love it um, so let's jump in to let's see. Oh, just I mean can you you've got nothing to complain about just just 
stunning. And I'm at a parking space here that, um, yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I could have easily pulled out of the, the shed there. Uh, and I like how these uh, PBR, not PBR, um, uh, I can't remember what this is called now, but uh, the global illumination, the lighting of, of, of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is second to none. Um, this really is the future for for proper simulation, um, but as we all know, it's uh, it's not quite there yet. And uh, P3D and X Plane still offer uh, very very um, hard to beat uh, content. Okay, so I am planning on a trip, a short flight from here over to. Um, uh, Liverpool to do some touch and goes and then and then back so what we're going to do we're actually going to fly in uh, in daytime so we're not actually going to fly real world time interestingly if you just heard that the the ambient bird noise changed from crows Two Tweety Birds for those um, astute listeners amongst you. I'm just looking at some of the high resolution uh, ground details here on uh, on this Payware airfield. This is uh, just recently released from Orbex, um, and so I'm kind of uh, interested to to get stuck in and see see uh, what this is about. So, um, let's just go over the aircraft. I have it in cold and dark um, state. So, um, and how much time do we have on the clock? Yeah, okay, just over 20 hours on the clock, which is correct. Um, let's just... Let's just look at our things there. They look all good. So, let's go to our checklists. We're going to go uh, pre-flight interior. Parking brake is set. Gear down. Check gear is down. Avionics are uh, off. Mixture. Let's uh, lean that mixture. Mags are off. Battery switch. Let's turn that on. Fuel quantity. Check. We have just about 50% on both tanks. Uh, fuel quantity. Annunciator panel. Check. Uh, testing and they all seem good they're flashing at least uh, flight controls free and correct we did um, there seems like quite a gradual incline curve in the middle of the joystick but as soon as you move the joystick out to the end the edge you've all of a sudden got this ridiculously sharp uh, graduation in the control surfaces so that's something I might try to look at later on um, but, you know, for the majority, you're only ever going to be using about this much of the control inputs. So that's not a, a huge deal. Uh, so flight controls, free and correct. Flaps, we can check those. Fully down. And fully up. Elevator trim, let's set that to neutral, which it is. Baggage door is... Closed. I think that's the baggage door. Yeah, that's the baggage door. Yeah, that's right. Oh, such a beautiful day. I can't wait to get in the air. Okay, that's the pre flight on the exterior. Let's go uh, pre flight exterior. Uh, lights, check. Uh, let's check that the lights actually work. Yep, landing light works. Tie downs, let's get those removed. So we do that through clicking on the the comm button here and our um, 
our iPad turns up and then we take the tie downs off, we take the chocks, we remove those, we remove the remove the tow bar if it needs removed, but we don't have that on right now. Um, so let's get rid of that. Uh, the engine oil door closed, um, fuel quantity check and cabin door closed and latched, which is correct. Before starting engine uh, checklist, circuit breakers, let's just check that all the circuit breakers are in, which they are. Alternate air off, and the alternate air, I believe, is here, and that is closed. Uh, prop lever, max RPM, fuel selector on the desired tank. So both tanks are equal, so we're going to put it on the left to begin with. And just double checking that in our iPad setting, we have the auto fuel selector set on. So engine start checklist. So before we start, uh, might as well just keep that uh, keep that open for the moment. So before we start the engine start checklist, I'm going to pull up um, VATSIM. This is uh, probably the, just about the right time for this now. So loading in, we are a Golf uh, Lima India Foxtrot Romeo. And let's hit connect. <clears throat> and that is connected to the Batson servers. And we should see a few different... Um... Oh, here we go. Yep. Yeah. We should see a few different things happening here. This is the uh, Vatsim as, sh as seen in Vatspy. Let's just refresh. Hopefully. Oh, look at that. There's actually some traffic. Some... That looks like it could be Kix VFR traffic. No... Lewis, I don't know. It could be, could maybe, maybe not. Anyway, so we are down here in. Actually, it doesn't show. A th it's probably roughly about here. If I hit refresh, maybe. There you go. So there's me. Um, I'm in Karen, Karen Arfen, and I'm going to fly along the coast and up into um, Liverpool if uh, the the approach is on long enough for me to get there. We have London East controller who probably doesn't care about us all the way out here. So probably Unicom until I get into London approach unless London control spams me with a message which he probably won't. So um, yeah, that's probably the way that's going to work. So let's first, uh, oh actually no, let's, yeah, let's go with the, the engine start checklist. Okay, cold engine, throttle, open half an inch, which is roughly about there. Battery switch is on. Uh, alternator is on. Beacon, rotating beacon. Nav lights. Uh, it's Anti-collision. Okay, I'm going to call those nav lights, yeah. Uh, so, nav lights. Ox boost. What on earth is that? Ox boost. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, but okay. I'm going to bring the mixture rich now. Propeller is clear, and then you shout ignition start. Just doing a final check. That's not. What about my. What about my fuel? What about my fuel pump? Do I not turn on the fuel pump? I gave it a tiny, tiny amount there. No fuel pump. Interesting. There's no fuel. Okay. Well, let's just try and see, see as per the checklist. Okay. So that seemed to be a smooth start with no fuel pump. So there we go. Uh, let's idle, idle at roughly there. Let's bring the mixture out to roughly 60-70% for lean, leaning on ground operations. Um, mag, mags both throttle are just for 1500 RPM and oil pressure is the first thing we check and it's in the green. So our T's and P's are good. Oil temps, oil press, pressures sorry fuel pressure oil pressures in the green oil temperature is will be coming up amps look good and uh, fuel pressure also looks good see if we turn on the fuel pump 
That's not really affecting the fuel pressure. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so, let's go taxi, but uh, first let's turn on our avionics because, of course, this is um, this is an, uh, an interesting aircraft. Let's go altitude reporting. Let's turn that on to ADF. Let's turn on our uh, various things here. Let's turn on our 1991 GPS, I think it was. There's a Garmin number one. Yeah, GPS, Garmin 100. <laughs> Lol. Ah, uh, gotta love the 90s. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are idling. And uh, we're going to taxi left, and the the hold for run the runway is just there. Um, and we have a slight crosswind from the left hand side for takeoff. Uh, so let's give ourselves one notch of flaps, and uh, let's tune Unicom. Which is uh, one two two, <coughs> excuse me, one two two decimal eight. Let's just double check that we actually have that now on. Uh, yeah, one two two decimal eight, and that's transmit. You can see the TX. That's how I know I'm transmitting on Unicom. So we've got that now set up. Let's just double check uh, that sim just before we go to take off. Obviously, we need a flight plan, so let's go and throw one in. Uh, we're going to be doing a VFR flight plan today. Uh, no, we didn't want to ident. That was a bad idea. Let's unident. No, okay, never mind. E G uh, C K to E G G P VFR uh, VFR. Um, Touch and goes at Liverpool, then return to Cairnarfon. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to be flying up to no no higher than 4,000 feet. Let's give us 110, an hour and a half. I'd say that's probably legit. Uh, file flight plan. Okay, so taxiing checklist. Transpond. Uh, okay, landing light as required. Let's. Yep, yeah, that's. Uh, that's on. Um, avionics are on. Radios are set. Transponder is also set to. Uh, yep, yeah, 7000 on alt. Uh, altimeters, check. They are set to ground ele elevation, which is uh, 1009er hectopascals. Um, heading indicator, yes. So the heading indicator off of this runway, let's roll, is I believe roughly 2-0. Let me just uh, zoom in on my... I don't have any actual um, Navigraph data for this airport because it's so small and out of the way, no one cares about it. Uh, runway 07 and runway uh, 02. So this is runway 07 we're wanting to take off on. So let's go 07 and see how that works. Um, that, let's just zoom out. Uh, we're going to, I'll just drag over Project Fly so you can see what's going on. We're going to be flying up. Uh, through the strait in between Anglesey and Wales and along the coast uh, and then into the Liverpool TMA uh, probably from the north probably from the uh, Liverpool Seaforth uh, VRP and then down and we're going to do some touch and goes at Liverpool and then a return to Carnarfon from there all VFR uh, nothing crazy it's just going to be a nice Flight to uh, to wet the whistle and uh, see what the see what the scenery is like around here. Um, okay, so, so we've set the heading indicator. We have checked that the taxi area is clear. Um, ground check, parky brake uh, set, mixture rich, prop lever max, throttle 2,000 RPM. Let's not do that though. Um, yeah, so that's a mag check. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Okay, we're going to go straight to the before takeoff checklist because 
we don't really need to strictly do too much there. Uh, let's just pull the RPM down to about 1100 and bring that mixture down again because I don't want to taxi ridiculously fast here. Yeah, we want to enjoy ourselves. So you can see we've got um, we've got proper grass here on this airfield. We've got lots of uh, autogen making it feel like it's lively. And uh, yeah, looking beautiful, really looking beautiful. Okay, so let's just hold short of the hold line and go through our. Uh, what am I doing? Here we go. So before takeoff, battery switch uh, is on. Alternator is on. Strobe lights. Uh, let's put the pitot heat on as well. Uh, strobe lights or anti collision are on. Uh, landing light is on. Aux boost pump. Okay, that's what that was. I'm sorry. Um, why I didn't see that, uh, understand what that meant earlier on. Um, that's my, my mistake. Fuel selector, fuel fullest tank, engine gauges. Let's check them. Uh, they look up RPM. Yeah, they look okay, except RPM's a little low. Let's just bump that up. Flaps set and checked. We are on flap setting number one. Trims are set to neutral. Um, and cabin door is closed and latched. Let's go take off checklist. Okay, so let's... Uh, Current off in traffic, Golf Lima Indy Fox at Romeo is uh, moving into runway two, uh, 02 uh, for northeasterly departure VFR, uh, Golf Lima Indy Fox at Romeo. That was uh, bad. That was bad. That was not exactly as standard phraseology should uh, uh, put it, but in my defense, there is no one around to listen to me saying anything, so uh, I can be forgiven. So this is actually my mistake, this is zero 02, not zero 07. So let me just, while I'm holding the brakes, readjust my heading indicator. Like so, that looks to be about zero 01, uh, 018, zero 019. Okay, so we're just holding, uh, let's go parking brake release, throttles full, rudder, let's go, um, mixture is rich. Rota rotate about 65 knots and initial climb 78. Current off in traffic, Golf Lima Interfox Romeo taking off runway 02 northeasterly departure VFR. That was better. Okay, so off for the brakes and smoothly increase the throttle up to full. using the rudder to counteract that uh, left crosswind and just putting a bit of down whoa whoa this is this is what I this is this is the weather this is the Microsoft flight simulator weather is unrealistic pay no attention to that and off we come as we begin to raise the nose let's pull up the gear And above 80, about about 90 knots, we can afford to bring up that flap, those flaps. And look at that! How beautiful was that? That was nice. Okay, so coming up through 1,000 feet, let's just uh, pull back my RPM to uh, about 22,000, and my manifold back to about, uh, again, 21, 22, and let's just trim. Beautiful. Now, uh, another thing I know that Just Flight have been doing is adjusting the textures for the window, um, the window dirt. And I think this default installation that I've done on uh, 0 0.5.0 has uh, very, f very little, if any, window dirt. Of course, there is a little bit you can still see around some edges. 
um, but very little uh, in general. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the climb checklist. Uh, uh, air speeds as required for what does that what does that say? For en route cruise, accelerate to 104. We're we're past 104. Ox boost pump can now go off. Landing light as required. Let's turn that off. An elevator trim set and lean above 3,000. And then that's the cruise checklist. We're actually partially done the cruise checklist anyway. So we're just going to climb up to uh, no higher than uh, 4,000, which was uh, as per our flight plan. <coughs> So on my left I can see Anglesey, and on my right I can see Wales. And I believe it's it's either this range in here, I think that's the top of Snowdon actually. Um, yeah, if I zoom in here, I believe, I very much truly believe that's quite a familiar looking peak to me. Yeah, I think that is the trail the, where the train goes up to the top of Snowdon. Uh, but I could be wrong, if, if those of you in the... Uh, in the in the chat think I'm wrong please let me know so I um, have I think I said in my intro which I'm filming separately that I have been having some uh, internet connection issues but we seem to be having a, a smooth a smooth Bing map Bing map data um, display here which I'm happy about and I'm gradually I'm just climbing casually at about 500 feet per minute. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring the heading uh, up to where we are and I'm just going to go on to uh, heading hold and autopilot and that's going to hold my heading and there's been a number of small bugs fixed with the uh, comm and the nav uh, implementation and how the uh, radials and, and uh, approach localizers and things are being tracked so that's good to hear <coughs> you can see the autopilot is uh, maneuvering to maintain that uh, set heading and we're still gradually in a little bit of a climb let's just put in a little bit of uh, upwards trim to try and uh, bring us into a bit of a climb Beautiful. So that's the main road that goes out to uh, Hollyhead, I believe that, that is. That's Hollyhead, is that look on Plan G? Yes, Hollyhead, which is one of uh, one of the big ferry crossing uh, ports of uh, the Irish Sea. Yeah, beautiful. Got a big quarry over there. And there's uh, there's Beth Bethesda, I believe it is, th which is, I think that yeah, that's I think that's Bethesda, in there, yeah, where the quarry is. And then we're just passing. Uh, this is called Banga. So I know um, that I did just have a world update. I believe it was a world update update from uh, uh, Microsoft. So I'm not quite sure what that entails, but I know that the weather, um, the implementation of the, the weather is being worked on, and I hope they do some tweaking to the way crosswinds affect the aircraft on takeoff and landing, because at the moment they really are w way too sensitive, way too twitchy. It just like you saw on takeoff, it all, all, of, it all of a sudden wrenches the nose of the aircraft um, so violently that if that happened in real life, you would probably have some sort of internal hemorrhaging as well as like the, the undercarriage would just be destroyed as well as the engine crankshaft and torque would probably rip the engine off of the, I don't know... <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm overreacting there, but like it's it's 
that that's way that's way too unrealistic. That's uh, that you saw there. I, I hope you can agree. So I hope that at some point soon, they will uh, include a bit of a, an update to the um, to the, the the default weather engine. The default weather engine. I mean, they are doing so well with the visuals, and they're still doing a lot of updates to the sim that I really hope that they give us an accurate, realistic rendition of weather as seen by based off of your metadata. Because of course, as we know, the, uh, the aviation world runs off uh, your ATIS information and your METAR information. Um, and that is not what is being accurately um, that is not what is being accurately, accurately uh, displayed. Let's just sit up at 3,000 feet for a bit. Um, in the Piper Archer 3 by Just Flight, you can uh, click the Piper, the Piper word just there, and that is a is a kind of altitude hold function, and they've provided that to you, despite the fact that. The Piper, uh, the Piper Arrow 3 doesn't have any altitude hold function. They've given it to you as a, as a kind of courtesy to those simmers who would, would rather have that feature. Um, and of course, if you want to fly the aircraft hardcore as the way it's supposed to be flown, you obviously wouldn't press that button because you wouldn't have, you, you just pretend that you don't have that functionality because in the real world you don't. So. Okay, so we're flying along the uh, the north coast here of Wales. Now we're up at 3,000 feet, by the way. We're going to lean out to about 60%, 70, 70, 60% on the, the mixture. And we've got some interesting landmarks here. We've got some interesting buildings and a very very rough cliff edge which and it looks like they've been doing some mining here at some point as well some shelf mining or something yeah and and further mining up in the up in the peak there got some some rivers coming downhill there's a bit of a weird v oh my goodness me yes uh, there are a few I issues as you can see <laughs> But there we go. It can't be perfect all the time. Let's 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 give it a bit of slack. It can't be perfect all of the time. It's it's very where it's very near perfection. I mean everything almost everything you look at is just beautiful. I mean look at the reflections off that the metalwork there. It's just beautiful. The lighting, the atmospheric scattering, the colors, it's all really 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 well done. Um, and it's a pleasure to fly, an absolute pleasure to fly, when you have a good, reliable internet connection. Look at this. Just, you're looking at the real thing. You're looking at the real world, and you can tell that when you when you look at this. This is not just based off of some autogen feature. You know, these are real fields that fit around real, real road systems and real villages and towns and mountains and forests. Anyway... Let's just have a look at Plan G. Let me just drag that across now. So you can see we've uh, taken off, we've flown up the channel, we're coming along the coast, and we're going to jog across uh, north. We're going to cut out across the water and come in to the TMA via... Actually, we could come into the TMA via Neston. That's actually... Yeah, let's do that. Let's come in via Neston across across this uh, marshy area just making sure that we keep clear of of uh, of this uh, outbound uh, departure uh, in fact we will probably descend down to about 1500 feet to make sure that we're we're away from any any inbound aircraft oh sorry outbound aircraft um, as you can see on the aircraft this sun has come out and 
or it is coming out and the plane the, the metal on the on the aircraft just kind of lights up beautiful that's again a bit weird how that that works but you know you're ask, it's it, they're asking a um an algorithm to calculate what is and what is not water and you can see there that it's the 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 um the feathering of the of coastal identification is uh, is at play there but yeah this is a this is a VFR flyer's dream this simulator Okay, so we can see we're traveling quite nicely. Let's just double check VATSIM now, and I bet you that that controller has gone offline. I just have a feeling in my bones. No, he's not. He's actually hanging in there. Okay, so let's go uh, 119.85. Like so, 119.85 is set. Let's just double check that we are 119.85, correct? <clears throat> so that is the um, EGGP ATIS. No, sorry, that is the EGPP approach, which is uh, Liverpool approach. So let's just turn heading 090. <clears throat> Double check our uh, barometric pressure is uh, zero, uh, 1009. Let's go actually 1010. And let me just grab a piece of paper and a pen here while uh, before I... Um, Actually, let's do what we should always do, which is listen to ATIS. 
which is um, Liverpool H is 124 3 2. Was that was that right? One twenty four three two. Uh, One twenty four three two five. Maybe I didn't turn these on. Huh. Okay, well, um... don't have any it says it's coming through oh hello Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, 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 te testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Knowledge receipt of information, bravo. And advise aircraft type on first contact. Liverpool information, bravo. Time 1950 Zulu. Automatic, runway in use 27, transition level flight level 65, surface wind 290 degrees 9 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more. At 2700 feet, temperature plus 8, dew point plus 3, QNH1009, threshold QFE1006. Okay, so um, a little bit of um, messing around, and we managed to figure out what was going on. 11985. Junction 11, probably best for me to look this up before I get in the air. I know I'm going there. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, pull off the autopilot. Liverpool approach, good evening, Golf Lima, India Fox or Romeo, radio check. Golf Lima India Fox and Romeo, Liverpool Radar, hello, readability 5. Thanks. Uh, Golf, uh, Golf Fox Street Romeo is a, uh, a Piper, Ar Piper Arrow 3 um, west of your airspace descending to 2,000 feet, uh, requesting entry of your airspace via the Neston VRP. Golf Fox Street Romeo, Roger, pass your details. A Golf Fox to Romeo is a Piper Arrow 3 um, Q &A, uh, with information Bravo, QNH 1009, uh, requesting entry of your airspace via Neston VRP for a touch and go at Liverpool. Golf Fox Trot Romeo Squawk 5055. A 5055, Golf Fox to Romeo.
set. Okay, I see Nesta. Come on, Captain Romeo, cleared to enter the Liverpool control zone via the Nesta lane, not above altitude 1,500 feet. CFR QNH 1009. Clear to enter your airspace via the Nesta VRP, not above 1,500 feet. QNH 10, uh, correction, 1009. Uh, Gulf Fox at Romeo. Gulf Fox at Romeo, correct. Okay, descending to uh, 1,500 feet. Uh, in time to cross over the coast uh, across Neston, which I can see uh, is the area ahead of me. This 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 kind of built-up area just here is Neston, and if you can see, this is Neston, and that is the airfield just there. And I can see that that's Neston based off my VFR chart on Plan G. So coming down to 1,500 feet coming down through uh, 2,000. We're going mixture rich now and we're going prop full. Um, and we're just bringing down the manifold. Uh, Liverpool radar, Gulf Fox for Romeo, uh, just be advised we are flying in daytime uh, VFR conditions uh, for your information. Gulf Fox for Romeo, Roger. Yeah, I just thought I'd let him know because um, he is, I mean, the current time in the real world is is pitch black at this point. It's it's after it's after sundown, so um, yeah, he, he it's good that he knows that. Okay, this is uh, 1,500 feet, uh, right about now. So let's just pull back now. Pull back into a kind of cruise situation. So now we're below 1,500 feet. Let's just pull up our uh, checklist in uh, readiness for <coughs> landing or approach. So landing light on. Let's go put that on. Fuel selector is on the fullest tank or should be. Yeah. Ox boost pump is on. Mixture is rich. Prop is full. Parking brake is released. Gear check down once we are on final approach. Go Fox, Romeo, inside control airspace, radar control. We towards the field, report it inside. Uh, copy that, we have the field in sight on our 11 o'clock. Go Fox, Romeo. Go Fox, Romeo, Roger, join and report left downwind, runway 27. Uh, number two of the circuit, number one is uh, Cessna 172, late downwind. Uh, copy, we'll look out for the traffic. Uh, join l and report left downwind runway 27, Gulf Fox for Romeo. Okay, so apparently we have traffic. I did not know that. Uh, I cannot see him. Um, so we'll, we will look out for him. We are number two. Um, which, which I rejoice that we have traffic. Let's just zoom in and see if we can actually spot him. If we can spot like, spot like a strobe light in the distance somewhere. I can't see one yet. <clears throat> Usually strobe lights are quite easy to spot in, um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So uh, let's make our downwind across the water here. So um, at about, I'm, I'm going to sit around 1,100 to 1,200 feet. I think that's acceptable for me. Um, I could pull up the chart for Liverpool, in fact, if I go to uh, Navi, Navigraph Charts, and let's do it without crashing. 
EGGP. Uh, probably should have pulled this up in uh, in cruise, but there we go. Approach uh, two seven. That's going to give us our IFR reference, noise abatement, radar minimums. See, one thousand five hundred feet, one thousand eight hundred feet. <clears throat> yeah, it's not going to give us any VFR, unfortunately. But you know. Uh, this will approach very good day, Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango at uh, wave 1800, uh, redirecting to Kirk Base, VOR. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, Liverpool Radar, hello, pass, your details. Uh, yeah, just a super light after, after one touch and go via uh, Kirk B, Liverpool City Centre, uh, downwind 27, touch and go, and then London, uh, Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, Roger, uh, report your origin, current position, and aircraft type. Oh. Uh, origin, uh, Blackpool aircraft out to super light, and, uh, sorry, what was the last target? Uh, Gulf Lima Tango, report your current position. Still can't uh, see that Roger, traffic. just overhead on Skirk, uh, route directing to Kirkby. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, Roger, Squawk 5051. 5051, uh, Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango. And Gulf Oxford Romeo is reporting left downwind, runway 27. Gulf Oxford Romeo, report final, runway 27, number one. Report final, 27, number one, Gulf Oxford Romeo. Okay, so we are to report final. He said we're now number one, so that guy... Good evening, landed. Liverpool Approach, Rhino 151, I stand 55, flying to Dublin as far as with information, bravo. Oh, we that's have a Ryanair. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, cleared to... Christian, you've confirmed you're flying VFR or IFR? Uh, VFR. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, roger, cleared to enter the Liverpool control zone via the Kirk EVRP, not above altitude 1,500 feet VFR, QNH 1009 -er. Play 10 to Liverpool control base via the Kirk VRP, not above 1,500 feet, with the Q&A to 1,009, Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango. Gulf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, correct. Okay, mixture is rich, prop is full forward. We are descending down... Gulf Echo Echo, leaving controlled airspace. Descending now, down to about 1,000 feet. Service terminated, squawk call to the QRT, frequency change approved, bye-bye. Thank you very much, bye-bye. We have a 14 knot uh, wind from the northwest. Okay, so checklist time. Landing checklist, flaps set, uh, final approach speed, 75. Final 51, next to radar, question Liverpool radar, hello, report aircraft flight. Boeing 737 800, runway 51. Right, 51, clear. We'll, we allowed the we allowed the wind to drag us around more than we should have. So now we're down a thousand feet. Clear to Dublin as well via the Wallasey Two Tango departure. Squawk five six zero three. Run one five one. Our base. Run one five one. Correct. Left base turn. And let's not lose any altitude in that turn. Let's do make that a rate one left hand turn. Thank you. And we will we will f f come out of that turn right there with two seven on our left. Let's go a notch of flaps. You can hear that. And uh, there's there's final. Go Fox at Romeo turning final runway 27, uh, requesting touch and go. Go Fox Ro Romeo, uh, Roger runway 27, surface in 29 or 0 degrees 9 and not clear touch and go. Clear touch and go runway 27, go Fox at Romeo. Alright. Go Fox Romeo, I have your circuit instructions when you're ready. Uh, requesting uh, exit your airspace uh, back through the Neston VRP, uh, go Fox at Romeo. Go Fox at Romeo, Roger. 
Okay, gear coming down. Actually, uh, for Golf Fox at Romeo, request uh, exiting your airspace via the north, via Seaforth. Golf Fox at Romeo, Roger. Okay, so it just gives us something different to look at. And uh, while I am here, oh, look at that. Beautiful, look at that, guys. <laughs> Golf Lima Tango, inside controlled airspace. It is a radar control. Through to Tarbok Island, then towards the field. Reports in inside. There's a written direct towards the uh, Tarbok uh, Island, and then we'll report the airport and site. So, Golf Lima Tango, Lima Tango. Right now, 151 is ready for push to start. Right now, 151, stand 55. Push to start approved. Push to start approved, right now, 151. Okay. Let's do this touch and go. Let's pull out the throttle. Flare, let the speed bleed off and let the main gear touch down. Like so. Oh. And then increase my speed. Bring that throttle back up. And off she comes. Positive rate. Gear coming up. That's probably the Ryanair. Okay, airspeed above 90 knots, let's go flaps up, and let's trim so that we don't go skyrot skyrocketing up, and once we hit a thousand feet, we will then uh, pull the engine back. Golf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, after your circuit instructions when you're ready. Uh, ready, copy. Golf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, after departure, runway 27. Left hand visual circuit, not above altitude 1,500 feet VFR. QNH 1009, -er. squawk 7010. That's an interesting uh, pattern there. The 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 like there was an old curve. Not the feet, but the QNH 1009 and squawk 7010. Golf Lima Tango, Lima Tango. Golf Lima Tango, correct. Break Golf Fox Rock Romeo. I have your uh, leading instructions when you're ready. Uh, good to go. Uh, Golf Foxtrot Romeo. Golf Foxtrot. Question. Golf Lima India Foxtrot Romeo. Cleared to leave the Liverpool control zone via the Mersey Lane. Bottom of altitude 1,500 feet VFR. QNH 1009. Clear to uh, exit your airspace via the Mersey Lane. Not above 1,500 feet. QNH 1009. Uh, Golf Foxtrot Romeo. Golf. Foxtrot Romeo, correct report over the C4 VRP. We'll report the C4 VRP, uh, Golf Foxtrot Romeo. Okay, he mentioned the Mersey Lane, and I don't have, stupidly, um, the the uh, VFR chart for Liverpool, which I really should have should have searched more for. Let me actually just see if I can search for that online. VFR procedures. Ah, right, I've got it now. Yes, the Mersey Lane. 
right? Golf Fox Hart Romeo, leaving control airspace, six miles, what service do you require? Uh, just the basic service, Golf Fox Hart Romeo, thanks. Golf Fox Hart Romeo, roger, leaving control airspace, basic service. Thanks. Okay. So Golf Lima Tango, Lima Tango, that's the Golf Lima Tango, roger, join and report right base, and report final, number for runway 27, number one. So I report uh, final for Yeah, you can see there. You can see there it's along it's along the uh, the waterway that uh, yeah so I was just off course there so we're just rewriting that the Mersey Lane yeah I can see that on the chart. So um, coming along, it should be on my right-hand side. The uh, the C fourth C fourth VRP is just here. Let's go back up to right now. One five one is ready for taxi. Right on one five one taxi holding point alpha one runway two seven. Taxi holding point alpha one runway two seven right one five one. And there we have the C4 VRP. Just uh, just there off our nose, right here. And so now, leaving his airspace, we can now turn left across uh, down the coast and climb up to our cruise out of 4,000. Okay, we're going to go on with our autopilot again and our heading hold, and that's set to 270, climbing up through 2,000 feet. So in the climb checklist, accelerate, uh, aux boost pump goes off, landing light as required, let's go off, elevator trim is set, mixture, and, turn of final and mixture, let's lean it above 3,000. Roger, runway 27, surface in 280 degrees 7, off, clear, Pitch and go, go flame and tango. Right now, one five one behind the light aircraft on touch and go. Line up runway two three right behind. Right behind, up behind the behind. touch and go aircraft, line up runway two seven behind, right one five one. Okay, thousand feet to go. Oh, there is a little. Uh, now I'm now I'm seeing a, a strobe, some nav lights there. I wonder if that's the Ryanair on takeoff roll. Probably. Okay. Oh no, icing, icing, icing. Let's not do this. Oh well, actually, this is my first experience of icing in the uh, Piper. So let's see what this does. We have 
pito heaters are on, and that's pretty much all this aircraft uh, provides. So the more. Uh, Golf Hawk Romeo is still in flight. Still in flight control. Airspace sent up above altitude 2,000 feet. Oh. Apologies, not above 2,000 feet, Golf Fox Romeo. Right. I thought he had. Uh, I thought he had. Uh, uh, he said uh, uh, after after the VRP outside. I can see. I can see the. Um, yeah, I can see the, the the layers of airspace now that he must be controlling that I didn't realize he was controlling. Never mind. Okay, coming down through three thousand. Uh, yeah, so I can see we're below zero. We need to. Um, At least the aircraft isn't getting utterly, utterly uh, bogged down in in in, uh, in ice. The default icing system, I believe they've tweaked it so that it's not as aggressive ice as uh, as in the default, uh, as dictated by the simulator. Because I've flown that before in a previous video, and uh, that's that's icing overkill. So. Once we come back to zero and above, we should um, we should uh, start getting rid of this ice. So let's go down to 2,000 again, and uh, <coughs> hopefully it, it melts off. Yeah, just coming. Traffic is a light aircraft left crosswind. Just coming at two uh, zero Celsius now. Clear for takeoff on way 27, traffic in sight, Rhino 151. Go, in the tango, traffic is a Ryanair 737 departing runway 27. Okay, there's uh, 2000. Just coming shy of zero degrees, so. We should start seeing things melt off. Let's, let's bring our heading uh, about 260. Yeah, slowly. Golf, Lima Tango. Port left downwind with intention. Uh, left downwind now, and. Uh, sorry, touching uh, full stop land. Golf, Lima Tango, Roger, report final runway 27, number one. Roger, report final 27, number one, uh, Golf, Lima Tango. Let's descend down to 1,500. Yeah. See if we can kick this. Uh, Kick this on. Right at one report passing altitude. Passing 2000, right at 151. Right at 151, climb now, flight level 180. Climb flight level 180, right at 151. Okay, there is two, uh, 1500 set, roughly. Okay. See if we can kick some of this icing now. Golf Lima Tango, just turn and uh, final, so 2-7. Golf Lima Tango, roger, runway 2-7, surface and 2 8 30, 7, not clear to land. Clear to land 2-7, Golf Lima Tango. Not really, but we'll see, maybe very... Right now, 151, Monitor Unicom, 1-2-2-decimal 8, bye-bye. Monitor Unicom, 1-2-2-decimal 8, right, 151, pass for 8 feet, bye-bye. Golf Foxtrot Romeo, Hollyhead Regional, one zero zero eight. Hollyhead Regional 1008 on the QNH Golf Fox for Romeo, thanks. There we go. Golf Fox for Romeo, Squawk on to the QNT, frequency change approved, bye bye. Frequency change approved, thank you very much for ATC, good evening, Golf Fox for Romeo.
There you go, we're back on Unicom. Frequency change approved. He is happy to uh, release us. And uh, let's just do a little bit of a uh, review of what we did. So you can see we came uh, inbound through the Nesten VRP. Let's just, yeah, there you go, the Nesten VRP. And uh, we did a left downwind, a base, a final, a touch and go. And then as I turned up north, uh, tracking out to the C4 VRP, uh, I didn't. I, I cut a corner there that I shouldn't have. I should have stayed over the water on my departure, and then turned at the VRP. And then I thought when, once I had left this airspace, I could start climbing as of as of here or as of here. And I started climbing up here, and that's when he reminded me I should be down at 2,000 feet or below. And that's when then I descended. And I believe it's as I left this airspace that he has given me Unicom uh, to go do my own thing. So it's just going to be a return to Karnofen and uh, a full stop landing. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome back. Uh, so we are just coming into Bangor here. Uh, Karn Karnofen Airport is just off on uh, the distant horizon there. And I went and found some uh, resources on the Kix uh, VFR website that is going to help us. Um, so this is a VFR chart um, outlining uh, the Karnoff, Karn, Karnoffen, Karnoffen, Karn Karnoffen or Karnoffen. I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. Um, outlining the air, the airfield here, and we can see actually here at the bottom. The airspace that we're just about coming into has a dotted red line, and it says um, um, exit of high speed, low level mountain exercise route. This blue line here coming through the valley uh, towards Karnofen. Uh Aircraft typically at 280 to 350 knots, uh, less than 2,000 feet descending, um, which means that we need to be. Uh, this 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 orange route is the route we're going to be doing. Recommended approach from north and east at uh, at altitude 1300. Lovely scenery. <laughs> so that is the Kix VFR guidelines. Uh, there's a lot of other information about the airfield itself. Uh, the runway 07 is actually probably more uh, is a, is a better runway to land on than this one that we took off from. So we're going to be landing on 07, and uh, yeah, so I hope that helps. We're going to be descending down to, we're going to be descending down now to uh, a 1300 or below, and we're going to be watching to our left hand side uh, as we pass Karanathan, and I'll show you the exact I'll show you the exact valley that um, the, air cr the the fast jets are used to come out of. Look at that! Look at the way that low cloud is hugging the mountains, and you see the shadows within the clouds there on on the on the shadow sides of the clouds. You see the darker patches of of, of mist. That's really cool. And then the sh the cloud shadow itself. And that's really cool. I'm really happy to say that um, this evening my uh, my internet has been rock solid and uh, has given me very nice looking scenery all the way to Liverpool and back so very happy about that okay so let's come down to 1300 or below here because we just know some some tornado some RAF jock is going to come ripping through that valley and he's going to give us some weight turbulence that we're going to write home about. Okay, so we're going to land a different way than we took off from uh, Karnafen on our way out because the wind has shifted slightly and um, it's given us 
an option of uh, runway uh, let me see what was it let me just pull up my plan G chart uh, we're gonna land on runway uh, let's see which runway is it Two five. We're going to be landing runway two five. So yeah, you can see off the you can see off the nose the uh, wind pushing us from the right. We've got about twelve knots. Uh, that's what Plan G says. We're going to be following this coastline, and then this this little inlet here we're going to turn into, and then take a right hand turn onto final. Um, here is Karanafen, and that is the valley that they usually come plummeting out of. Speedbird 123 on Unicom. Yeah, someone else. And uh, I believe this is where they have a castle, but uh, of course, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator probably is not going to give us yeah so the uh, the castle the famous Karanafen castle is just oh oh okay there it is <laughs> it has actually just put that's beautiful that's beautiful oh that's so happy I'm so happy um, I'm also way too low so that's a lovely little flyby there That's really nice. Beautiful. But um, I'm going to crash if I go any lower, so let's just... Let's just set up for uh, our approach. Let's go mixture rich, prop, full forward. And uh, let's arrest our descent. Quick sharp. He says as he clicks on plan G and descends another 300 feet <laughs> um, okay 100 knots gear down those are the windmills uh, the windmills I see, see on the airbase so we're not that far away Yeah, descended way too low there, obviously. But there we go. There's a little caravan park. Yeah, so I'm blowing all of the uh, all of the rules and regs about flying too low over caravan parks in in Wales here right now. But there we go. So there are the lights for the end of the runway. So we're going to turn on to final approach. Second knot of notch of flaps. Yeah, so we've got about a nine knot headwind now, which is all good. And we're going to go nice and low across the caravan park. Hello, folks. Hello. And uh, yeah, a little bit too high. And beautiful runway textures there. I like that final notch of flaps power idle and flare and touchdown well despite that really low altitude over the uh, the inlet I uh, I did fairly well obviously no ATC to guide me in but there we go if there was other traffic here I would um, I would be calling out on Unicom, but there we go. Okay. After landing, flaps up, landing lights as required. We can turn off our landing light now. Strobe off. Peter Heat can come off. 
Ox boost pump can come off, it is. A landing light can come off. And elevator trim set to neutral. Okay. Well, ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining me on this really casual, uh, enjoyable flight um, VFR across North Wales and uh, looking across Anglesey and uh, doing a touch and go in Liverpool with uh, some surprisingly uh, busy ATC. Well, it's not really; it wasn't really busy, but it was. Um, it was. It was warm. Let's just say. Okay, let's set the parking brake. Parking brake is set. Let's pull. Actually, let's go uh, turn off of uh, turn off. And then throttle idle. And then mixture idle. Ooh. Continue. There's the propeller. And let's go chocks, tie downs, and tow bar. And there we go. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, VFR flight in the uh, 0.5.0 .0 update of the Just Flight Piper Arrow 3 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The, uh, for those of you who did notice, um, the icing on the windscreen did gradually clear up um, by the time we had got back to the airfield here. So that's a small testament to the fact that um, Just Flight have been tweaking the icing modeling of this aircraft uh, to, to appear more realistically than the default Microsoft Flight Simulator icing, which was way too aggressive, um, I found on, on uh, default aircraft and on <coughs> Carinado aircraft. So, uh, so there we go. I really enjoy this little airfield. Um, I love the proximity of this airfield to Liverpool and some other f uh, places in Wales. So uh, I would definitely be wanting to fly in and out of here again. And I hope sometime soon actually uh, to be rejoining some, some old folk at um, Kix VFR so that we can, I, I, I can fly with other small regional air, air aircraft in a group. I think that would be a lot of fun uh, to do videos of that as well. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me guys and uh, catch you next time.